Giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akiyam out there doing the work of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, in truth, faith, and in sincerity. This is Brother Tazapai here, and what I want to do is go over the four beasts of Daniel chapter 7. And what I want to do is have this video, this lesson as a bookmark, for, for future reference as I delve into uh, other prophecies of the prophets concerning the times that we are in right now, these end time prophecies, okay? So, uh, yeah. So, again, just for future reference, I want to go back over this because the, the things that's taking place around the world now centers around this fourth beast. And this fourth beast is the, one of the main players today on the world stage and it's important that you know who this beast is if you uh care about what's going on around you you know and how to recognize america in scripture all right so we're going to start here daniel chapter 7 verse 1 it says in the first year of belshazzar king of babylon david had a daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter. So this is in the time of Babylon. So King Belshazzar was King Nebuchadnezzar's son who took over after uh, Nebuchadnezzar. So we're in the time of the Babylonian kingdom. And note I did say kingdom, okay? So uh, verse 2 says, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. It says, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. All right, so we're dealing with these four beasts. So just off the rip, the four beasts are dealing with four dominant world powers at their time that would, that would arise. All right, as the scripture says, from out of the sea, out of the sea of what? The sea of the sea of people, out of the nations. It says, uh, in verse four, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings, and I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and and made to and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given it. And this is the very same kingdom we just referenced, Babylon, all right? Now, the wings are in reference to Babylon coming out of what kingdom? See, Babylon didn't just rise up out of the dirt, as the scripture said. It rose up out of the sea. It, it came forth as an offshoot of a previous kingdom before it, and that kingdom was Assyria. Now, Assyria's uh, motto, or what would you call that? Uh, their logo, for lack of a better term, was the, the lion with the wings. Okay? And it says, I beheld till the wings thereof was were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth. Right. When the wings was plucked, meaning Assyria fell and out of it rose the Babylonian Empire and it was lifted up high. It was the head of gold that the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. He saw that head of gold and guess what? That was Babylon. The Most High lifted it up from the earth. It said, and made to stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. Okay. So that's the first beast, Babylon. It says, verse five, and, and, and behold, another beast a second like to a bear and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth of it uh, between the teeth of it and they said thus unto it arise devour much flesh all right so this is in reference to the medio persian empire and the medes and the well yeah, the Medes and the Persians came and took down Babylon and then they became the dominant world power. And I want to say that was Darius 
that you read about in the book of Daniel. It actually goes into Daniel, the uh, fifth, fifth chapter. Let's read a little bit of that history. All right. Bear with me. Daniel, the fifth chapter, it tells you how uh, Darius the Mede, what are we going to pick up? We'll, we'll, we'll get to uh, straight to the point. We're going to start at verse 25. All right. So this is the downfall of Babylon under King Belshazzar. This is Daniel chapter 5, verse 25. that says, and this is the writing that was written, Mene Mene to Kyle, you farson. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, the Most High had numbered thy kingdom and finished it. To Kel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. So this is it. This is what we're reading about in Daniel 7. And it goes on to say, uh, verse 29, then commanded Belshazzar and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. And Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. And so that's the history right there. And you can even Google this. This is even in secular history, how the me the Medio Persian Empire conquered and took down the Babylonians. OK, so this is that second beast like unto a bear and. Uh, Yeah, and I forget the connection of the Medes to the bear, but it said it was, uh, how was it worded? Uh, it said, and it raised up itself on one side, right? Because the Persians became mightier than the Medes. The Persian empire became greater. So one side was lifted up higher than the other side. Okay. So, uh. Let me see here one second. Okay, now what I want to do is uh, break down those three ribs. Um, and these are three of the major continents that the Me Medio Persians went to conquer, and that was uh, parts of Africa, of course, parts of Europe, and into Asia Minor and uh, parts of Asia. Those represent the three ribs that was, uh, how I said, it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said, thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. And the Med Medio Persian Empire became a mighty empire, but it didn't attain to the glory of the Babylonian Empire. And so we go on in history, verse 6, it says, After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, the beast had also four heads and the dominion was given to it all right now <clears throat> the next major uh kingdom to arise in secular history in biblical history was the grecian empire hellenistic greece so you can understand all right and uh they are the ones that took down the Medio Persians, the Medio Persian Empire, and began to rule circa 330 BC. So, uh, yeah, I could go back and give a few dates uh, 
you know, roughly. So the Babylonian Empire came into uh, power roughly 605 B.C., 605, 606, depending on which scholar you follow, all the way down to the Medo-Persian Empire, which came into rulership. It would have been around 536 B.C. Circa 536. And then you had um, the Grecian Empire came into power, <clears throat> 330 B.C. All right. So here we come to 330 B.C. It says, and after this, and lo, another like a leopard. Now, this iconic pictures of, uh, of what's his name? Uh, oh, shoot. What's this guy's name? I, I forgot his name. Just like that. Um, Alexander the Grecian. Uh, all right. Alexander the Greek. There's iconic pictures of him wearing the leopard head and, you know, the leopard skin. And that, that was the solidified the uh, prophecy. All right. He was coming in prophecy. He put that on. He wore that leopard head with the skin to let you know, you know, th this was a fulfillment of prophecy for those biblical scholars out there. All right. It says, <clears throat> after this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had on the back of it four wings of a fowl. And because they, they went quick to conquer in all four directions, north, south, east, and west. It says the beast had also four heads and the menu was given into it, and that four heads was in reference to Alexander's four main generals who eventually took over after his death. But those are the four heads, you know, under Alexander. It says in verse 7, well, that's all. They don't give you much on Greece, but uh, just to name those generals, because they are important in history because they did go forth or go on to... Uh, rule and reign <clears throat> in the Grecian Empire and that was uh, Ptolemy Sodom or the, the line of the well the line of the Seleucids up in the north then you had the line of the Ptolemies down in the south or the southern kingdom of Greece and then you had Cassander and Lysimachus Lys Lysimachus and those were the four main generals and um, right, they took over rulership and the, the, the king of the north and the king of the south, the Seleucid Empire and the Ptolemy Empire began the war with one another. And that war carried on from the Seleucids as the, uh, as, as the, uh, what's that guy, his line, uh, the line of the Antiochians or Antiochians rose up. Uh, they basically took over that northern empire and they took on the feud. So that feud was actually between uh, the Ptolemies and uh, uh, the line of the Antiochians or Antiochians, if you will. So now we're getting into this fourth beast, and this is verse 7. Daniel chapter 7, verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns. So this beast is very much relevant. <clears throat> Although, you know, this is history for us now. It is also going down in the present. This beast is back. All right. Make no mistakes about it. This fourth beast is back. Because this is the beast, the same beast that would be in power at our Lord's return. And so the Lord hadn't returned yet. So 
you know, this beast must still be in power. And we know we at the we close to the Lord's return. For those of you who are watching the prophecies, you know we're close to the Lord's return. So you know that we are back in this fourth beast system. And this is what I say, recognizing America in the scriptures. All right. So <clears throat> let's go back into this. Daniel 7, verse 7. After this, I saw in the night visions and behold, a fourth beast, meaning another kingdom, a fourth kingdom. And notice after this, you'll read about no more kingdoms. There were only these four major kingdoms that the Heavenly Father wanted to highlight in secular history uh, for the sake of his prophecies. And it says dreadful, right, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth and it devoured and break in pieces. Now, what kingdom rose after the Grecian Empire. What kingdom conquered and subdued the Grecians? And again, you can Google this, but that's none other than the Romans. And the Romans were known for their weapon superiority. You know, they they had good they had good weapons. They had good steel. They had the best concrete. Some of the some of the things that well, the concrete that they could make back then, they can't duplicate it to this day. They had concrete that could set underwater. So ancient Rome was doing big things, but right, as far as on the battlefield and, and pertaining to this particular prophecy, Rome came in with a superiority, you know, with, with a... Uh, and this was with every every nation that rose up. You had to be superior to the ones you, you took down. But Rome far exceeded all of these other nations, you know, in the fact that they, they was given it by the Heavenly Father. They was given the, the knowledge to forge better, stronger weapons, and they had better battlefield tactics than any... Uh, any army to date at that point, you wasn't touching Rome with nobody touching Rome. And this is why it says the fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong, exceedingly. All right. And strong, exceedingly. And uh, right about that time, you had the Spartans. You had, you know, you, you had some tough military, some tough armies in the world at that time. Men. You know, but none of them was touching Rome. Okay, it said, and it had great iron teeth, right? Going into its military, your teeth are your military. So it said it had great iron teeth, right? You weren't gonna mess with them chariots and their their, their sword play, the 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 uh the integrity of their, their weaponry, their swords and axes and arrows, you see, and their shields. Yeah. Add it all up, you have one formidable foe in the Romans. And so, right, it was said, you know, you wouldn't even whisper against Rome for fear of their military. Is why it says it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, meaning they they went forth to conquer without mercy, with reckless abandon. They didn't care. They stamping the residue, meaning, yeah, they not leaving no stone unturned. They're going through, as I stated, with reckless abandon. Either you get down or you lay down. It says. All right, again, it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. Now, this is the part that really um, highlights the fact that this is in reference to, into uh, modern day Rome here in America. 
All right. So it says uh, again, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. The, the four beasts before it was established as what? Monarchies. And these, these monarchies ruled, you, you know, they ruled as a kingdom. So Nebuchadnezzar ruled as king. Darius ruled as a king. Cyrus, king of Persia, ruled as a king. And so did Alexander. And then when he died, his four generals took up that mantle and ruled over their regions as king or kings. But here in Rome, we have something different. And what that was, was they established a Senate and a house to appoint leaders, which they would call Caesars. And the Caesars would rule. But they was appointed by the House and the Senate the same way here in America. You have a president. As basically uh, established by the House and the Senate or electoral votes, if you will. But uh, that's how it was diverse. And if you do a Google search on uh, ancient senates or senates of of the ancient world, all you're going to get is articles about Rome. Because that didn't exist before the Roman Empire. Men sat as kings. Sometimes you had queens. But that's how it went. Until the Roman Empire rose up and they didn't want to give one man all this authority and power. So what they did was let the, the basically the real power rest in the Senate. And they chose uh, a, a, a head. You know. So you you read about the history uh, uh, Julius Caesar. He, he threatened that because he was he was on the verge of becoming dictator, uh, the, the emperor of Rome. You know, although people may throw that term out there, the, the emperor, the real power was in the Senate. But Julius Caesar was he was in danger of taking that power from the Senate. So they killed him in the eyes of March. So history goes. And uh, uh, Octavius Augustus rose up after him. And so uh, it was that Tiberius. No, it was Augustus. Yes, Augustus. So um, yeah, they didn't want they didn't want all the power of the kingdom centralized into one man. So they, they shared it among the Senate in the House. And so that's the diverseness of the, the beast that was before it from the fourth beast. So this was Rome. Now, we see the same structure in place today. You know, and this is in the, in the sense of taking over the entire world, but it stems forth from, you know, and we'll go into this. This is why I want to go into this lesson it stems from Revelation, the 17th chapter, when you read about the scarlet, scarlet colored beast. And there was a, a whore who sat upon it. All right. And it tells you that that beast had 10 horns. Well, what are we reading about right here? It said back again in verse seven that it was it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. Right. Because we're dealing with the same structure again. All right. Now you got Rome, Rome, the the uh, landmass, the ge geographical Rome, but then you have spiritual Rome that's trying to take over the world right now, stemming from the woman that sits on that that beast, which is Rome. Here in America, what do we have? Well, this is the revised Roman Empire, but here in America, what do we have? We have everything in place, just like ancient Rome. The, from your cathedrals. Well, a lot of that is Roman architecture, 
but uh, you had you have your uh, your coliseums and and your your uh, the gladiator gladiatorial sports. Same as in Rome, you got your uh, Roman numerals, and you got a lot of Roman um, uh, symbols and and things of that nature. This uh, that they use heavily because this is the revised Roman Empire. You, you're not going to get around that. There's it's so many similarities. It's identical in so many ways, and that's because this is the revised Roman Empire. So uh, you're going to see some of them same things. Now that Ten Horns back at that time was the European Economic Community, which you see that reemerge or uh yeah reemerge as what the eu all right the the european union and when you talk about the european union or those uh that european economic community there's 10 major countries you know that that uh goes into this the same 10 all right and you're dealing with uh So like you, you're dealing with uh, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Italy, France, Germany, Greece, Denmark, and Ireland. Oh, Ireland and Spain. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the same ten horns of the European economic community as is with the EU today. And all of this conflict is due to the prophecy written in Daniel, the second chapter. This this controversy and this, these gripes and beefs that's going on with the EU today, that's prophecy. The Most High is stirring these things up, okay? That's the Most High doing these things. So, uh, right, as I stated, we're going to go into more of these prophecies because this is the time, right? Things are things are going down. We're looking down the barrel of World War Three. America is in the onset of hyperinflation. And there's about to be a worldwide food shortage. But let me just let you know, there is no shortage of spiritual food for now. So eat it and get it while you can, because there will be a famine also of the word. So uh, we will we'll just uh, end it right there and we'll be more to come in the near future. So uh, just look out and until the next one, Shalom.